The battle between Piccolo and Donna against 17 and 18 would continue. The fight was well evenly matched, with both sides getting in some rather impressive hits. After Piccolo had merged with Kami to become a super Namekian, if you will, his power had increased tenfold, allowing him to fight on par with either of the androids one-on-one. -on -one. And now, with the newly reformed Android 15, aka Donna of the Mascara, former Amazonian kidnapped by Dr. Gro and experimented and turned into an android, now fighting by his side. It became much more evenly matched, with neither ones being able to gain the advantage, although the destruction would be paramount. However, a sinister force was slowly creeping upon them, this being the creature known as Cell. Tien and Krillin had picked up on this, and they were racing to the island to try to warn everyone and to get them out of harm's way. While at the same time, Victor Stone, aka Cyborg, was now flying off from Capsule Corp with the shutdown device for the androids. Hopefully, he could make it in time before anything could happen, as he was locked on to Piccolo's energy signature, as he was the only one that could be detected. Although he could sense the likes of both Tian Shenhan and Krillin making their way to the battle area also. Perhaps they were going to be of assistance. But then there was another anomaly. Something that seems to be a melting pot of different energies all swirl into one. It was Cell. Cell was now making his move onto the androids. And he wouldn't do something like that unless he was confident that he could get them. While on the lookout, as Vegeta and Trunks were still using their time in the hyperbolic time chamber, Goku and the others could tell everything that was going on from down below. Radix was starting to become irritated. We have to do something, Kakarot! If Cell is looking to make his move, then he must be fairly confident that he could get a hold of the androids. If we don't do something quick, who knows how many lives could be lost? But I don't know. Should moving down there really be the best option, though? Goku would think. He felt like maybe it would be best if they were just to wait to see what would happen. Maybe if they were all collectively strong enough, then perhaps they could actually beat Cell. Of course, Chi-Chi was trying to keep Radix under control. He didn't want to see anyone else die, and he felt like this was their opportunity. Why not just give everything they've got... If everyone were just to jump in all at once. But Goku also had to think about the other side of things. Piccolo had merged with Kami. That meant there were no more Dragon Balls. No one could be wished back if something went wrong. Horribly wrong. Maybe it was selfish to think. But he wanted to be calculated about this. At least for now. Just to see what would happen. But as Cell got ever closer. They knew that the time for indecision was over. Diana wanted to go down there and help them, but at the same time, she also wanted to do what Goku felt would be in their best interest. After mulling it over, Goku finally decided. Diana, Radix, Chi-Chi, we're going down there. But what about us? Chi-Dai would ask. No. Chi-Dai, Gohan, you stay here at the lookout. If Vegeta and Trunks emerge, tell them where we are and where to locate us. Hopefully, once they're pointing in the right direction with their new power, they can get there in a quick enough time. But are you? I'm sure. Now stay. Everyone, grab hold of me. Radix, Chi-Chi, and Diana would grab hold of Goku as he locked on to Piccolo's energy signature and immediately got there with instant transmission. Of course, Gohan was a bit disappointed. He had been training just as hard for the last three years, and now when it seemed like everything was on the line, he and Chidai were being left out. Of course, Chidai could understand where he was coming from. She walked over to him as he sat down slumped, rather disappointed with himself. It's not too bad, Gohan. I'm sure that he's only looking out for you because he cares, and it's not that. 
I know why he wanted me to stay back. He's worried after what happened. You mean on Namek? You know about that? Gohan would ask. Well, yeah, you told us. Well, me and Trunks, that is. In the future, I mean. Oh, so you knew me in the future, huh? How did I... Um, well, uh... How did I... You were an amazing master. Both me and Trunks, we owe everything to you. When we lost our parents, you were there for us. You shielded us and you trained us. We even learned to become Super Saiyans because of you. Well, I assume that I... You were protecting us. You got us out of harm's way and you fought them both on your own. I see. And I didn't make it. I really don't... I just... I know. All we can do now is just sit here and wait and hope that things will turn out all right. Piccolo and Donna stood on one side of the battlefield, 17 and 18 standing on the other. If they kept this up any longer, the island was going to be destroyed, 16 thought. But then, his scanners would pick something up. First, it would be the arrival of Son Goku, along with Diana, as well as Radix and Chi Chi, 16 squarely locked eyes on Goku. At that same time, Krillin and Tien would arrive as well, as they all gathered together. Both 17 and 18 would look to each other worried, but excited. Well, the man of the hour finally showed up. Hey there, Son Goku. In case you haven't noticed, we've been looking for you for a couple of days now. Really saved us the trouble of hunting you down, so thanks for that. Goku would look to the androids as he walked over towards them. Sixteen would make his move as well, brushing past both seventeen and eighteen as he looked down upon Goku. Son Goku. You are the target of which I must eliminate. Yeah. I know a lot of people have been after me. Sorry to keep you waiting. But right now, I'm going to have to ask you to take a rain check on that. Negative. You are my primary objective. You must be eliminated. You're just after me, right? No one else? Goku asked 16. Affirmative. My programming. My only target. Son Goku. No one else within my parameters. So that means you wouldn't take anyone else's life. Just mine. Affirmative. <sighs> Look. We don't have time to waste. I know that you have to come after me. But we need to get as far away from here as possible. So why don't we put a delay on that fight, at least until the real threat's out of the way. Once that's done, I'll gladly fight you anytime, any place. You name it. Hmm, that does sound rather tantalizing. Everyone turned to look and see where the voice had come from, standing on a cliff overlooking the entire group. What the hell is that supposed to be? 17 would ask. It's Cell, Piccolo would say. And who the hell is Cell? 18 would ask. It's the thing that's coming after you, Donna said. The both of you. Why us? Because it is the will of Dr. Jiro. For all of us to become one. To become the perfect being. But look at this smorgasbord of energy. A feast. Sun Goku. Diana of Demascara. The Saiyan Radix. The Cheetah Warrior Chi Chi. Krillin. Tien Shinhan. 
Piccolo Jr., Android 15, Android 17, 18, and even 16. Hmm. All delectable. Delectable indeed, Cell would say as he licked his lips. Yeah, I don't know what type of freaky shit you've got going on, pal, but I don't plan on joining, assimilating, or being a part of you now or anytime soon. So how about I do you a favor, and I tell you where you can stick that gross, overblown tail of yours, and you can get the hell out of here. Because I don't think you understand, but right now you're pretty outnumbered, even if all of us don't get along. You really think you're walking out to Victor? So would then jump down in front of the entire group. I've spent days conjuring my energy, gathering, collecting, feeding, and getting stronger. There's not a doubt in my mind how this is going to play out. The only question is, how many of you are foolish enough to get in my way? Seventeen, eighteen, you will be devoured. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It was predestined. It is the will of Dr. Giraud. I don't give a damn what the old doc had in store for me. He doesn't decide my fate. No one does. What are we going to do? Piccolo would ask Goku. Goku then looked to 16. You still want to have that fight? I can take presence of the situation. This is of greater priority. When this is over, you and I will have our battle. I will not forget, son Goku. Well, at least we can come to an agreement on something. What's the orders, brother? Kakarot would say. As Cell was now surrounded by the group of fighters. Goku, Diana, Rax. Chi Chi, Krillin, Tien, Piccolo, Donna, 16, 17, and 18. All of them together. We have to destroy him by any means necessary. We go all out. We don't give him a chance to escape. We're going to end this here and now, Goku yelled. He revved himself up as the golden aura would surround both he and Rax as they began to transform. <laughs> both Goku and Rax would transform into Super Saiyans as Cell would take note of this new transformation. So, the legendary Super Saiyan, Son Goku, it is an honor to be graced with your presence. Save it, you vile piece of trash. I'm going to send you to your master right now. Your ambitions end here, Cell. <laughs> we'll see about that. Give it your best shot. The entire group would charge at Cell, everyone attacking all at once. Chi-Chi would enter into her cheetah form as she turned into a cheetah-like woman, her tail swaying from side to side as she crouched on all fours before attempting to blitz at Cell. He immediately caught her with the back foot, smashing her into the ground, only for Rax to come from behind as he launched a double Sunday hitting Cell directly in the back of the head, as both Donna and Piccolo would go charging from the right, while Goku and Diana would charge from the left. Cell, even while temporarily stunned, was easily able to fend off the four. 18 and 17 would charge at Cell, only for 16 to stop them. What the? Why are you stopping us? You two need to evacuate. We will hold off Cell. <laughs> yeah, right. 
First you wanted to stay on the sidelines and now you're giving out orders? Yeah, I don't think so. He's not going to get away with this. And besides, I want to take personal credit for destroying the last of the good Doc's will. I mean, if this is supposed to be his grand creation, how would he feel if a couple of runs end up destroying it? He's going to be rolling over in his grave. That would be a negative course of action. If Cell assimilates with both of you, it will be the end of the world. Well, our former enemies, now turned allies, are standing along with us. I don't think anything bad's really going to happen from it. He's right, 18 would say. We all just have to work together. We can take him out here and now. Krillin and Tien would launch their attacks as well. Krillin would go in with a destructo disc, managing to sever Cell's tail. As Tien would tell everyone to clear out, he raised his hands together. All right, I've got him in sight. Everyone, hit the deck! Try beam Ha! What the? Yeah! The first try beam would create a massive square-like crater, keeping Cell within it. As Tien would keep launching his try beams, Cell keep being burrowed deeper and deeper into the ground, unable to withstand all of the impact that he was taking. Immediately, Sixteen would move to the edge of the hole as he would unlock both of his arms to unleash his cannon fire, unleashing all of the payload that he had to offer. Piccolo would charge up the Hell Zone grenade, while Goku and Diana would both charge a Kamehameha wave. Chi-Chi and Raditz would both charge up a double Sunday. Everyone was ready to fire everything they had into the hole, with Cell trapped inside of it. And unlike in the original timeline, he was still stuck in his first form, not his second. So even while he had gathered a lot of strength from the people he had managed to absorb, even now, there was still but so much that his imperfect form could take. I'm going to keep him in place, Tien would yell. Everyone, empty everything you've got! Try beam! Ha! Ka me ha me ha Double Sunday! Hell Zone Grenade! Hell Impact! You heard him, sis. Right. Give him hell! Everyone poured all of their strength into this attack. They would all clear out from the island immediately as it was virtually destroyed. But even still, this had to have been enough. Cell had to have been taken out. There couldn't have been any more of him left. The dust that had emerged from the explosion of the island would be great. A large cloud surrounding the entire area. As everyone had fired all that they could. And their energy had taken the result of the hit. They had poured almost all that they had into that attack. Chidai and Gohan could feel it all the way from the lookout. Wow, they really gave off that much power? It had to have been enough, don't you think? Gohan would ask Chidai. If all of that power couldn't kill him, then I don't know what will. Goku, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, Goku would say to Krillin. Did we get him? I think so. But how are we going to be able to tell? All of our energies, we're all here at once. There's no way of knowing if he's been taken out or not. Piccolo? Hey, Piccolo! Goku would yell out through the dust. 
I'm fine. I think we got him. Okay, then. We need to do a head count. Everyone, let's get out of the dust and see where we're... Goku would immediately catch a punch to the face as he was knocked into the waters. Goku! Diana would yell. Huh? What the? Ah! Ah! Huh? Where is he? Is he still around? Tien would yell. He's, he's got to be. Ah! 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 My God! Tien felt something stabbing him in the chest. It was. Ah! 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 You'll do quite nicely. Dan! Krillin would rush towards him, but by the time he did, Tien was gone. His body, all that were left were his clothes on the end of Cell's tail, and. Hmm. You're next, Krillin. <gasps> Wait! No! Goku! You'll pick up! Cell grabbed Piccolo by the neck. I warned you. You wouldn't get a second chance. Now, join me. Piccolo would grab hold of Cell's tail, fighting back against as he tried to stab him. Cell would then raise his hand to Piccolo's chest, shooting right through it and dropping him into the waters. Seventeen and eighteen would try to evacuate through the chaos along with sixteen, only for Cell to cut them off as he backhanded seventeen into another island. I warned you. I told you we could do this the easy way or the hard way. But you just had to pick the hard way now, didn't you? (laughs) You, you son of a... (laughs) Go to hell... (laughs) Seventeen, get away from him! Children, all you are are children. Fools who cannot see the forest for the trees. In the end, this is your destiny. This is why we were created. And to fight against fate, it is futile. One way or another, you and I will become one. Seventeen, eighteen. I promise... It will be painless. You and I will become the ultimate being. We will become perfection. Do not fight against the fate that has been given to you. For this, we were born. Eighteen would slowly back away as Cell would charge towards her. Sixteen, however, would go barreling at Cell, knocking him back and far off. You two need to get out of here now! Sixteen would go charging towards Cell, but it was futile. Cell would blow off his arm and then shoot him away. Cyborg could feel the energies that were fading. He had to be faster. Krillin and Tien were gone. Cell, he was only getting stronger. 
Diana and Goku would fly to where Cell was, Ryx and Chi Chi following close behind. Kakarot! Tien! Krillin, there! There! There's no time for that! We have to stop them! We have to do something! Seventeen would get up, looking at sixteen who had been badly injured, eighteen who was being stalked by Cell. Damn it. Why? Why did it have to be this way? It was his fault. That damn doctor. That son of a bitch. It was bad enough that he took away any chance of them having an ordinary life. But then he created this monster to hunt them down. What type of sick game was this? What did they do to deserve this? To deserve being treated like this? No. No more. Seventeen looked at Cell. He was so preoccupied with eighteen. He wasn't going to see him coming. He knew exactly what he had to do. Seventeen would charge up energy into his hand. He remembered the move that that bald-headed guy had used, the short one. He flattened it into a disc. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, then. <laughs> Stay away. Stay away from me. It'll be okay, 18. I promise. It will be painless. Cell's tail would begin to open. He was ready to strike. But then, 17 would throw his own version of the Destructo Disc. Cutting off Cell's tail once again. Yeah! <sighs> Damn you, Seventeen! Seventeen would grab Cell into a bear hug before hitting him with a suplex. Eighteen! You need to get out of here! Right now! Cell was starting to rain elbows into Seventeen's gut, but he held on for dear life. Seventeen, what are you? Get her out of here. Goku and the others would see what was going on. They raced over to Eighteen as Goku would prepare to use instant transmission to take her away. No. No, I'm not going to leave him here. Hey, son Goku, you keep her safe, damn it. Wait. Seventeen, I... Take care of yourself. Lazuli. No, 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 no! You're coming with me. Straight to hell! Seventeen would activate his self-destruct. Goku would grab onto Eighteen and Diana, along with Radix and Chi-Chi as they used instant transmission to get away, arriving at the lookout. By the time Cyborg had gotten there, the explosion would occur, taking out everyone and everything. Seventeen was gone, and Cell along with him. In the midst of the explosion, 16 was taken along as well. But still, that wouldn't change the loss that they had incurred. Piccolo was gone. Krillin and Tien, they too were gone. As they arrived back to the lookout, Gohan and Chidai would gather with them. What? Dad, what? What happened? I... 
Hey, Jess. No. Lapis? Eighteen fell to her knees. Why? Why did you... I... Why? Mr. Piccolo... Piccolo... Krillin... The end... In a way, they had achieved victory. But still, even in victory, they suffered great defeat. By the time Cyborg had arrived to the scene, all he saw were destruction, islands, now gone. What the hell? What happened? Cyborg would land into the crater. It was almost as big as the island itself. Water was already starting to seep down into it. But there was no signature that gave off Cell's presence. Did they manage to beat him? But I can't sense Krillin. Or Mr. Piccolo. Or Tien. Oh God. What did it take? As Cyborg looked around, he could tell that whatever had happened, it was definitely not for the faint of heart. But so caught up in destruction, there was one thing he didn't notice. A tiny insect. It looked like a bug. It flew towards Cyborg undetected. As it landed, it crawled onto its back before injecting its pincer into the gaps of Cyborg's circuitry. Cyborg was so caught up he didn't notice it as the tiny little green android-like insect began to burrow itself into his body. Huh. I need to find a way to rendezvous with the others. I need to find Goku. And I need to know what... <coughs> what the... What's going... Hmm. I will not be defeated so easily. What the... What in the... How are you... Hmm. This will have to do for now. Victor, you will serve me. <clears throat> Get out! Get out! Get out right now! Get... Get out of my... Get out of my... Ah! Uh, uh, uh. <sighs> now, this is what you will do. First, destroy that shutdown device. Cyborg would crush it in his hands and destroy it. Now, you will forget all about me. You will forget that I even exist. But I will always be a part of you. Your will is my will. Now, return to Capsule Corp and await further instruction. Yes, 
Cyborg would then get a call through his cybernetics. It was from Bulma. Victor! Victor, what happened? It seems like the battle's already over, Bulma. There's no sign of Cell anywhere. The androids, Goku? Where is everybody? There's no one around. No one at all. I... I'm going to return back to Capsule Corp now. Okay, that's probably for the best. You still have the shutdown device, don't you? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I still have it. Good. We don't know if we might need it in the future. Just head on back to Capsule Corp, and we'll go from there. Understood. As the communications came to a close, Cyborg would fly back to Capsule Corp ready to await further instruction. In the meantime, as the Z-Fires were still reeling from their loss, there was still some upside. After all, Cell had been defeated. And in time, maybe they could fix the damage that had been done. All while waiting, the doors to the hyperbolic time chamber would open as a smug and arrogant Vegeta walked forward, looking around at all the defeated and the hopeless. Hmm. What's the matter, Kakarot? You look like you've seen better days. M Vegeta, I, uh... You're... You shouldn't be surprised. The prince of all Saiyans has claimed his rightful place once more. And speak of the devil. Vegeta locked eyes on 18. The androids grace us with their presence. So, you overgrown bucket of bolts with legs. How are you feeling for a round two? Don't try me. Oh, but I think I will. It's not going to go how you think. Vegeta, now isn't the time for... Shut your mouth, Kakarot! The adults are talking. We're not fighting them. Look, a lot's happened and we just need to... I said shut up! Vegeta would send off a wave of energy, knocking Goku back to the ground. Diana would stand on guard along with Gohan, looking at Vegeta angrily. Trunks would then step out next. Father, that's enough. <laughs> Whatever. I still have a score to settle with you, android. So, we can do it here and make a mess? Or we can go somewhere else. Your choice. Fine. We can go wherever you want. But I'll be honest. I'm not really in the forgiving mood right now. So if you really feel like trying me, be my guest. I'll do more than break your arms this time. I'll break that ego of yours. And that stupid pride. Watch closely, Trunks, because you're about to learn your first lesson as a Saiyan. What happens when fools try to underestimate them? A fool that believes she can break my pride. No, you've only stoked the fire, and now you're going to face everything. Every scorching moment of the inferno that you've created. And you might not be glad that you did. Vegeta and 18 would fly off. Trunks would follow behind them. Don't worry. I'll be filled in on what happens later. I'll make sure he doesn't do anything too reckless. Chidai would follow behind next. I'm going to inform him about what happened. 
What do we do? Gohan would ask. Right now, Goku would say, we need the Dragon Balls. But we don't have any. Not here. But there are more. We need to find Namek. This concludes Dragon Ball World Strongest. What if Wonder Woman was in Dragon Ball Part 19? As always, if you enjoyed today's video and everything else that we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings that's to come out now and in the future. Stay tuned tomorrow as we continue with Dragon Ball World Strongest. What if Wonder Woman was in Dragon Ball Part 20? But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings, signing off, and I'll see you next time.